Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to share some real interview questions shared by one of our subscriber. His name is Neeraj. So Neeraj recently faced an interview with TCS and he has around five years of experience. He shared all the questions with us. So in this video, I will go through each question one by one and explain them in a simple way with the answers as well. So if you also faced any interview recently, please share your questions with us. You can fill out the form in the description. It will really help others as well. So also, if you want to prepare with me in a mock interview session, you can fill out the form available in the description. All right. So let's start the video. The interview started with a spring boot question and the question was what happens internally when you start a spring boot application. Now to answer this, you can say that when we run the main class, the at spring boot application annotations triggers the auto configuration and component scanning. It creates the spring context, scans all the beans and initialize dependencies automatically. Then it starts the embedded server. Tomcat by default and deploy the application on it. Finally, it runs any command line runner or application runner beans if present in the application. While answering the question, the interviewer might ask a follow up question, which is can you use a jetty or undertow instead of Tomcat? You can say yes, we can use jetty or undertow instead of Tomcat. We just need to exclude the Tomcat dependencies and add the starter for jetty or undertow in the pom.xml. Then the interviewer moved to a Java question. The question is, what is the difference between string builder and string buffer? So you can start your answer by saying that both are used for mutable strings, but string buffer it thread safe because its methods are synchronized. String builder is faster, but not thread safe. We use string builder in single threaded environment and string buffer in multi threaded environment where synchronization matters. The possible follow up question with this question would be according to me is which one do you usually use in your project? The interviewer, the interviewer might ask after that question. So you can say that mostly string builder because we handle string manipulation inside single threaded methods like JSON formatting or logging. Next, they switch to a microservices question. The question was, what are the key challenges in microservice architecture? The answer would be something like some major challenges are service communication, data consistency and distributed logging. Each microservice has its own database. So transaction across services become tricky. Of course, there are multiple ways to handle that, but this is one of the challenge. Then monitoring, fault tolerance and deployment automation also add complexity in the microservices. That's why we use tools like Eureka for service discovery and centralized logging using ELK or Splunk. If you answer this question perfectly, the interviewer might ask like, how did you handle logging across various services? You can answer this by saying that we used a correlation ID or request ID for each request and pushed log to a centralized ELK stack or Splunk maybe. This helped trace requests easily across multiple services. After that, the interviewer asked a Spring Boot question. The question was, what is dependency injection and how it is implemented in Spring Boot? Now, this is a very common question. You can simply answer this by saying dependency injection is a design pattern where objects don't create their dependency themselves. They get them from the Spring container. Spring Boot handles it using annotations like auto wired component or a uh, service it helps with the loose coupling and makes the code easy to test container manages the object creation and life cycle automatically so as a developer you don't need to about uh, the object creation on bean creation the uh, spring container is handling them for you the possible follow up question with this question according to me would be can we inject beans without using auto wired we can inject bean without using auto wired by using constructor injection spring automatically wires bean even without auto wired in newer versions if there are only one constructor then they move to another core java question what are the main differences between hash map and hash table the answer would be both stored data in key value pair but hash map is not synchronized while hash table 
इक्वली सिंक्रोनाइज हैश मैप अलाउ वन नल की एंड मल्टीपल नल वैल्यूज वेर एज हैश टेबल डजेंट अलाउ एनी नल की और एनी नल वैल्यू ऑल्सो हैश टेबल इज लेगेसी वाइल हैश मैप इज प्रिफर्ड इन मॉडर्न कोड द इंटरव्यूअर माइट आस्क दैट इफ यू नीड थ्रेड सेफ्टी विच वुड यू चूज You can say I would prefer concurrent hash map because it's more efficient than hash table for multi-threaded environment. Next, the interviewer asked about Spring Boot configuration. How do you manage environment-specific configuration in Spring Boot? Now you can answer this. We use profiles in Spring Boot. Each environment like dev, QA, prod has its own property file like application dev YAML, application QA YAML, application prod YAML. Or if you are using properties, then application properties, application dev properties, something like that. So we activate a profile using a property Spring dot profiles dot active. This helps. Keep environment specific databases, URL, credential, or any APIs keys separate. Now the interviewer might ask that did you store credential directly in your YAML files or property files? You can say that no, it is not secured enough. So we can use a vault service to store the secret or secret management, or we can encrypt the properties or values inside the property file. And guys, quick reminder. If you also faced any Java interview recently, please share your questions with us. You can fill out the form in the description. And if you want to join our mock interview session, you can use form available in the description. We will schedule it one for you. Then the interviewer moved to a microservice architecture question. What is API gateway and why do we use it in microservices? Now the API gateway is a single entry point for all client requests in a microservice setup. It routes your service to the right service and applies security, handle rate limiting and perform load balancing as well. It also hides internal service URLs from the client for security. So in many projects we use Spring Cloud Gateway or Kong Gateway for this. Now as a follow up question interviewer might ask that how did you use gateway in your project you can answer that we used spring cloud gateway with jwt authentication each incoming request was validated at a gateway before forwarding to the internal microservice next there was a java 8 question what are the optional and stream apis in java 8 now here how you can explain it Optional is used to avoid null pointer exception. It represents a value that may or may not be present. Stream API is used to process collection in a function style like filtering, mapping or reducing the data. Together they make code cleaner and more readable. Here on the screen I have an example of optional and then I have an example of stream API code. Now there are multiple follow up question can be in the uh, Java 8 features. One of them would be what is the difference between map and flat map. You can say that map transform each element while flat map flattens the nested list. Then there was a project related question. Can you explain how you handle inter service communication failure? Now the answer would be when one service depends on another service failure can happen due to network or downtime we use circuit breaker like resilience 4j or strix to handle such cases if a service is down the circuit breaker opens and prevent further calls temporarily we can also define fallback methods to handle responses gracefully if you answer that perfectly the interviewer might ask that did you use resilience 4j in your project or hystrix in your project if you use that you can say that yes we have integrated it with fame client we define fallback classes for each external call to return a default response when the target service was unavailable after that the interviewer asked another spring boot question what is the difference between component service and repository annotation in spring now this is the most common and most simple question available in the spring boot you can start your answer something like this all three are specialized annotation of component meaning they register beans in the spring container service is used for the service layer where business logic resides repository on the other hand used for the DAO layer or DAO layer and it adds automatically exception translation for the database errors component is a generic stereotype for any bean that doesn't fit any category or other category now you may get a follow-up question something like can i replace service with component yes 
you can replace service with component it will still work but using specific annotation makes your code more readable and more meaningful Next, there was a question from microservice deployment. How do you deploy your Spring Boot microservice? And the answer is we package our Spring Boot apps as a jar files and deploy them on Docker container. Docker images are built using a Docker file and pushed to a repository. Then we use tools like Kubernetes or OpenShift to orchestrate the deployment. Each microservice runs in its own container with resources limits and environment variables. Now the interviewer might ask that did you use CI CD in your project? You can say that yes, our Jenkins pipeline handled the uh, building, testing and deploying the application automatically for the QA and dev environment or any other environment. Now comes a tricky core Java question. What is the difference between checked and unchecked exception in Java? Now checked exceptions are checked at compile time. For example, IO exception or SQL exception while unchecked exceptions occurs at run time. For example, null pointer exception or arithmetic exception. We must handle checked exception using try catch or by declaring them in a method signature. Unchecked exception on the other hand don't require mandatory handling. Now the follow up question would be how do you handle exceptions in your project? You can say that you used global exception handler. If you if you say that you use global exception global exception handler it will be a great impression that you use spring boot exception handling mechanism. So you used global exception handler with controller advice and exception handler annotation to send consistent error responses. Next the interviewer asked about transaction management. So how does transaction management works in Spring Boot? Now Spring Boot manages transaction using the transactional annotation. It makes sure that a group of database operations execute as a single unit. If any exception occurs, the transaction rollbacks automatically. Internally, Spring uses AOP proxies to manage commits or rollbacks logic. Now to dig deeper, interviewer might ask that where do you use transaction in your project? You can say mostly in service method that perform multiple database updates like inserting audit logs and updating records together. Then there was a design pattern question. How do you achieve communication between microservices asynchronously? For asynchronous communication, we use message queues like Kafka or RabbitMQ. Instead of calling another service directly, we publish an event to a topic. The consumer service listens to that topic and processes the messages when it arrives. This helps it decoupling and improving system resilience. Now they might ask that did you use Kafka in your project? If you use Kafka in your project, you can say that yes, we use Kafka for event driven communication between services, mainly for audit, logging and notifications. Now a very project specific question. Can you describe one challenging issue you solved in your project? So I would give you an example you can use in your answer. Uh, one challenge I faced was handling large payloads between microservices. The requests were taking longer and sometimes failing with timeouts. We optimize it by using asynchronous processing with Kafka and compressing payloads before transmission. This reduced response time and improve reliability as well. Now they might ask, what did you learn from that issue? You can say that I learned the importance of scalability and proper async design when system grow large. So that's all about about this interview and the interview question. I hope these question and answer gave you a clear idea of what to expect in real interviews. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends as well who are preparing for the Java interview. And don't forget if you want to share your own interview questions or experience or you want to attend a mock interview with me, you can fill out the form link in the description. See you in the next video.